God's plan is to make you the chief, the choice, the best, all that there is, the head and not the tail. So let's talk about it. Hey, child of God, welcome to the Rich Salts webcast brought to you by the Debt Free Army. Today's message in, is entitled, What Makes You the Head and Not the Tail? Before I get into the teaching, let me encourage you to visit our website. While you're there, check out all the free stuff, sign up for the Rich Salts email, the Rich Salts phone call, and take advantage of all the 800 blogs, teaching material. It'll bless you. You can get a financial education, create your own financial resource library right there at debtfreearmy.org. Okay, what makes you the head and not the tail? Let me begin with some questions. How did, you, how, how did you see yourself as a child? How did you see yourself in high school and college? How did you see yourself in academic or, you know, uh, athletic endeavors? How did you see yourself with members of the opposite sex? How did you see yourself in the marketplace? How did you see yourself in a marriage and with a family? Now you notice I said, how did you see yourself? Properly, I should, the real question is, how do you see yourself? How do you see yourself today? And more importantly, how will you see yourself tomorrow? If there's one message that I teach in television, internet broadcast, CDs, DVDs, blogs, rallies, seminars, literally around the world, it's simply to encourage people to see themselves the way God sees them. Because I want you to know, He's changing things all the time. He's moving you from glory unto glory. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 13 says, And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and, shalt, and thou shalt be above, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe, and to do them. Now it's important to remember these words were first used on slaves, people walking in a slave mentality who were coming up out of Egypt. They were using, well, they were used as an example, for instance, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11, where it talks about that we might escape the bondage of slavery so that we can escape the bondage of slavery that they experience and how we can enter our promised land walking in the blessings and the benefits that are promised to us in the Word of God. Several things we need to consider when we look at that verse. First part of Deuteronomy 28, 13 says, And the Lord shall make thee. Now that's significant. Not anybody else, but the Lord. Our great God, Jehovah Elohim, the Almighty One, shall make you. Now we're not talking about a chief of staff, an assistant to an assistant. We're not even talking about an angel. It says God Almighty will make you the head and not the tail. According to Strong's Concordance, the Hebrew word for head means head, big surprise, top, summit, upper part, chief, total, sum, height, front, beginning, choice, best. In other words, the head is a position of leadership. Now the tail, according to Strong's Concordance, means the end of something. So as I said at the beginning of the broadcast, God is planning to make you the chief, the choice, the best, the total of all that is. He never intended you to be the end of a thing, but to be the beginning of it. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, and the New Living Translation says, So you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. Now I want you to get ready to shout as I read Deuteronomy 28, 13 to you and the New Living Translation. Here's what it says. If you listen to these commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you today, and if you obey them, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you will always be on the top and never on the bottom. Now I want you to pay particular attention to those the last 11 words in Deuteronomy 28, 13 and the New Living Translation. And I'm going to talk about them right after this. You know, there's all different kinds of money. There's hard-earned money, inherited money, stolen money, gambling money, and the list goes on and on. I'm Harold Herring, 
president of the Debt Free Army, and I'm here to tell you about a very different kind of money, miracle money. I've discovered that God's miracle money is available not just to a select few, but to those who know how to reach out and receive it. I want to send you a free copy of a book that I helped develop and publish entitled Miracle Money. God told me to put this book into the lives of those who had the faith to pick up the phone and call 1-800-DEBT-FREE. If you're suffering economic hardship, if it seems you just can't make ends meet financially, then this may be the most important phone call you'll ever make. The book is free. The call is free. So why not pick up the phone right now and call 1-800-DEBT-FREE? Learn about the miracle money God's holding for you. Call 1-800-DEBT-FREE. Welcome back. We're talking about why you're the head and not the tail. I just read Deuteronomy 28:13. Uh, and the New Living Translation says, If you listen to these commands of the Lord your God that I'm giving you today, and if you carefully obey them, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And here we go. You ready? Here are the 11 words. You will always be on the top and never at the bottom. God's desire for you is very clear. He wants you to be the chief, the leader who's always on top, the one who's always winning. Now, the key to manifesting His desire for you is the same as it was for the children of Israel. And like the old hymn, listen and obey, trust and obey, listen and obey. Listening and obeying His Word places you in a position to receive all these things. The scripture says again, if you listen to these commands of the Lord your God that I'm giving you today, and if you carefully obey them, if you obey His Word, if you follow His instruction, then great things are going to happen. Consider 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 and 21 in the New Living Translation. So whoever cleanses himself from what is ignoble and unclean, who separates himself from conduct with contaminating and corrupting influences, will then himself be a vessel set apart and useful for honorable and noble purposes, consecrated and profitable to the Master, fit and ready for every good work. Here's the question. Are you ready for every good work? Hallelujah, I believe you are. Now, if you, when I ask you that question, if you said, well, and you started thinking about excuses, stop it. Stop it right now. You've got to stop looking at where you're at and begin focusing on where you can be and will be through obedience to His Word and following His instructions. No one is deserving of His grace, so we need to stop putting our imperfection and lack of talent or situations into the circumstances. The really good news is that if we start at the bottom, even if we feel like we're starting at the bottom, you don't have to stay there. Where it's where you're at is not where you're going to stay. Listen to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 20 to 23, New Living Translation. Yes, each of you should remain as you were when God called you. Are you a slave? Don't let that worry you. But if you get a chance to be free, take it. And remember, if you were a slave when the Lord called you, you are now free in the Lord. And if you were free when the Lord called you, you are now a slave of Christ. God paid a high price for you, so don't be enslaved by the world. And yes, He did. He paid a very high price for us. He sacrificed His only begotten Son that we can have life eternal and abundantly. So make no mistake about it, God doesn't want you in bondage, and He most definitely doesn't want you to stay in bondage, financial or otherwise. In fact, God wants you to be free. In fact, why don't you say that out loud? God wants me to be free, even personalize it. God wants Harold Herring to be free. God wants Al to be free. God wants Janine to be free. Just say it out loud. Say it out loud. God wants you to be free. Now, one more thing. It doesn't matter what you've experienced in the past, loss, financial or personal embarrassment or disappointment. It's not where you're at or what you're doing right now. It matters where you're going. Because when you obey His instructions, when you follow His Word, then I want to tell you, you will, you will soon become the head and not the tail, to be above and not beneath. Through your obedience to His instructions, you will rise to spiritual and natural prominence. It's just that simple. You may not feel like it. You may even feel like you're smart enough to be a leader. But the truth of the matter is, 
I'm much more concerned about and interested in how God sees you than how you see yourself. If you let, you God, if you let God change you, then you can move to a whole different realm supernaturally. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that the few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. God has the, new, God has the unique ability to make something out of nothing. And that's what He's going to do with you. When you obey His Word, He's going to make something out of nothing if we just let Him. You know, I want to tell you your journey to the top will begin and end with your obedience to His commands. James 1.25 in the Contemporary English Version. But you must never stop looking at the perfect law that sets you free. God will bless you in everything you do if you listen and obey. Don't just hear and forget. What an incredible promise if we listen and obey. Hey, child of God, take your mouse, move up to the top of our web page where it says sow a seed, just double click and ask God if today is the day that He'd have you sow, a, or well, just a precious seed into this ministry. Do what He says. The amount's up to you. That's all I ask. Do what God tells you to do. And uh, you know, just keep thinking rich thoughts and happy trails and We'll see you tomorrow.